Hey everyone, today we're gonna do a 36 by 48. We'll get the first session in and I'm gonna do it uh, demo style. So like talking my way through, trying to vocalize everything I'm thinking. And uh, the sun is getting lower. All right, and here's my palette. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to see the palette while I'm painting, but sorry about that. All right, uh, titanium white, cad yellow, light, cad orange, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, a purple, gosh, I never remember what purple I have. I think this is a uh, violet from uh, the Van Gogh brand. Ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, it's kind of dirty, but I'm okay with that. Um, this is usually my celestial blue, this lighter value, but this big pile is actually a phthalo cerulean blue. Uh, so there's that, and this is just a mix I cleaned off the palette just now. I'll probably use it too. And this is the scene that I'm going to be painting. And there was just more light streaking through here. You can see it a little bit right here and on this tree. Um, there's a little bit of cloud cover, but it's kind of coming and going. So I'm sure I'll get my light again. But I love uh, this big reflection of the sky. Um, these trees right here, you can see some nice light back there in the distance. Um, and I love the shape, the shape of the water here. So and I, I don't know if I'll be getting this section over here or not. So that's the scene. Let's get started. And I don't use any mediums or anything other than just my dirty turp in here. And uh, I'll thin out some occasionally. You'll see me dipping down to do it. But that, uh, the brand I'm using right now, it's uh, Terpenoid. And that's uh, like an alternative uh, terp turpentine. So, so this will just be one session. And uh, the weather is not looking like it's going to allow me to continue working on this. So uh, the second session may be a while from now. All right, that tree line in the back, I want it to be about right here, so. So that tree, that tree coming up somewhere like that. The lighting was just perfect when I first got out here and by the time I ran to the car to get my gear some clouds came in, but that is the nature of painting on location. All right, this is the edge of my, this is part of the, so the Bitterroot River is right over there, and I guess it splits off back here somewhere, and a little, a little stream comes this way, and this water is almost perfectly still. Let's see, I'm not entirely sure kind of feeling this out as I go. Let's see what's this. And I have a photo up there for you guys to see the image, but as I always say in my demos, um, I'm not looking at that photo. If I was looking at that photo, um, I would probably be, you know, some of these shapes might be not exactly correct and whatnot, um, but I'm just kind of making stabs and guesses at it as I'm, as I'm glancing over in real life.
just glancing over at all the bushes meeting the sky. Coming all the way over to these big cottonwoods here. Or one, it's actually one tree, it's kind of split. Wait, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, that's what I'm going for. Kind of draw some of the contour of this just to kind of remind myself this is coming up it goes flat a little bit comes back up okay all right let's block a bunch of this in i think i'll start with the darks and the water and I'm going to start out, I use a lot of stiffer uh, bristle brushes, but I'm going to start out with a, this is just a thin synthetic uh, filbert, I guess, filbert. Probably a number six, four or six or so. A little thinner. And squinting, looking at the reflections of these trees. Tree goes this way and its reflection goes opposite. This way, these are going this way. straight for the, the land, meeting the reflection. So a couple of months ago, I ran out of small tubes of yellow ochre, but I have a big, a big 500 milliliter uh, can of it. And I thought, well, I'll wait to buy more yellow ochre until I use this can. And that can is annoying to open up. So I just haven't been using yellow ochre for, <laughs> for a few months and I seem to be okay, okay without it. All right, some of my light is coming through and I'm gonna hint at some of these spots of light. Got a visitor coming over. May I come see what you're creating? Sure, I'm barely, barely started. Awesome. I love it when I see people out in nature painting instead of taking a photograph of it <laughs> and then going home and yeah. you, you, as you know, you're an artist. You can't capture the same light. Yeah. The colors are not diff aren't the same in a photograph as they are for real. Okay, I have so little time. We're gonna go uh, super speed mode here. 
Let's see if we can just get stuff blocked in. that to go more purple. Yeah. Follow my little contour lines. Kind of a wet, wet area. Kind of, it's wet down by the water and then it dries out. It's a reflection. These reach up much taller than I had them. Kind of patchy. Shadow, 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 shadow. I don't want that repetition that way. Um, and it's not what it's not what's happening in nature. Nature never, almost never, has that uniformity in it that our brains most certainly do that. At least when our brain goes to make action on the canvas. It's like sometimes we just like lose a few brain cells. All of a sudden we're doing something we had no intention of doing. All right, I'm looking at the distant trees, kind of a purplish, uh, it's, it's hard to say what it is. Kind of going for a kind of a grayish purple. Let's block it in. This is a Beauport easel, by the way, um, and I like it for for my larger stuff. And I just keep using my my normal easel, the Yarka, for for my palette. Let's go for the sky. We'll do the sky and then we'll hit the water. And then we'll see how much time we have to, uh, to play with it after we've kind of got the initial block end done. Okay, that sky is, there's a little cloud cover, but it's pretty blue. Um, I like to have some variety in my skies. I don't want it to just be, um, let's see, that'll be some trees. I don't want just clean solid blue. Um, even when the sky is that, I like to add some variety just for variety's sake. Um,
So today it's not solid blue. There's cloud cover, there's grays, there's lighter blue, there's a little darker blue up higher. So that's what I'm gonna go for. And of course, my approach and style in painting it lends, lends itself well to being kind of crazy like this, but that's just pure personal preference. Um, you know, your preference may very well be much cleaner, neater sky. And it can still be beautiful, of course. Come back with these trees. This is like super duper fast. Let's go lighter. Let's go, let's add some darker stuff to the top. Kind of squinting, seeing it all one value, even though there's a lot of variety in what I'm doing. Little shift up, it's nice. some turp and looking at variety variety and texture variety and color variety and strokes so here's some wet turp along the horizon here while there's some light back on these distant trees. Let's see. Quite a bit more light on a couple of trees right in this area coming up. for the reflection in the water. Actually, before that, there's, this is not water right here.
and it's not that blue, but I think it'll be nice. Pull it up a little bit. It's funny, I talk about that variety in the sky and I didn't do it. It's like I felt like I was shifting it, but I wasn't. So, I can add some more variety. And this reflection eventually comes down and just goes dark, warm, kind of a brown water. There's plenty of the reflection over here, but there's a ton of uh, kind of branches coming through it, which I like adding those kinds of things over. So I don't mind just putting some of this in there. So this reflection comes all the way till it touches these dry reeds here. Okay. The brightest part of that reflection is right in there. Oh my gosh, pick that up. Reflection, it's nice and bright coming through here. It's nice and bright right here. There's some trees, uh, trees reflecting over it there. Back. So this is wet, wet on wet painting. So coming right back over more wet paint. Um, and I, I hold my brush and just get some nice paint on my brush and just drag it, just drag it down straight through. And over here, I mean, it's just tree branches everywhere. There's a couple of trees that come down to about here it's kind of a little cluster so my thinking right now is um, I don't have much time and I want to hint and suggest at as much detail as I can just in building just in building the painting um, I'm happy with kind of an overall feel of where it's headed kind of the structure of it the composition everything and these little 
uh, these little details will start making it feel like it's coming together. Um, but I'm not at all thinking finish. I really like a lot of what's happening. I love, this is, I, of course, I paint this way. I have this crazy energy, fast, thick, thin variety, and things happen that you don't have control over. And that's, I mean, that's like my bread and butter <laughs> with painting. I mean, that's what I'm aiming for. It's frustrating at times, because uh, it feels like you're, you kind of just have to go for it um, to see what, what happens and what you create and instead of having a, a real tried and true plan but that's not me at all I mean um, I don't plan anything I want to wing everything and uh, that's how I paint as well And I think that, um, you know, being true to who you are as a person should, uh, who you are as a person should come through how you paint. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. That's when I think, when you figure out a visual language that describes who you are as a person, I think is when you can really make some nice work. Um, At least that's what I'm aiming for. Just suggesting, hinting and suggesting it. Stuff. Stuff here and everywhere. Grab a bit of a smaller brush. Hint at a, a bunch of these branches coming off of this cottonwood here. And this is one of the cottonwoods that has a bunch of its uh, dead leaves on it, which leave a nice warm fall color look. Definitely a late a late fall color but it's being hit by light just hinting come back later with sky through this probably not this session and we'll see um, I would love to do the second session of this with you guys um, but as seeing that I don't plan anything, we'll have to wait and see. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we have snow in the forecast, which I'm very excited about. So we'll see when this scene is available again. Branches, literally a million little 
things coming up. There's some coming over this way. And then up here I have some uh, What is this stuff called? And over here I have this like dry, dry grass. It's really bright. I don't think, yeah, I shouldn't be worrying about this right now, but maybe just some notes, notes to myself that there's bright things over here. Yeah, whatever. Look at the uh, reflection here. Uh, my goals, uh, what I'm after in painting, isn't to replicate exactly what I'm seeing. It's, it's a. Um, I don't even know. Some, I don't even know how to explain what I'm doing. Is, it's. I want. Nature is crazy. Nature is wild, and I think there's a lot happening. There's a lot of energy. Um, there's a lot of motion in nature and that's what I want to try and capture um, and so I'm not so much interested in you know that this tree is reflected here and it is exactly a precise way <laughs> not that I necessarily needed to tell you that I'm not trying to paint precisely it's pretty obvious but um, but yeah and so like I was mentioning before, sometimes, you know, when you're trying to paint the energy of, of nature, it's like there's not a, a straightforward one, two, three on that. Um, so it can be trying to figure out how to make something work it can be tricky because it's uh, because you're trying to get a feeling, you're trying to get the essence of something, not exactly as it appears. And that isn't always straightforward. If ever, it is straightforward. And that comes all the way down and kind of just obstructed a few areas. There's this reflection, there's branches going every which way. I just want a hint. I want a hint at the craziness of nature. That's, uh, maybe that's better put than whatever I said before. And it's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing about nature is how wild and crazy it is. Um, I've said this before in previous demos, but you know, loving the, the craziness and wildness of nature, it's always like a shock to my system when like, these plein air groups want to go to the like, you know, botanical gardens. It's like the most manicured, pristine, like city park. Um, and I'm not knocking it, you know, it's just preference. Uh, a lot of people find find real beauty in those things, and they're often pretty. Um, but my our personal taste always gets in the way. <laughs> For a first session, I'm pretty happy with that. I love, I love some of the wild and craziness. I think uh, 
something that's hard to do in painting is to maintain that throughout the whole painting. Let's clean this up a little bit and the outline is a little rough on the eyes. Soften it up some. Look at this reflection over here. These two. There's another one. There's a reflection here. I don't have the tree for it. I don't know. I guess I'll come up. It's about right here. It kind of comes across this way. I'm, I'm just gonna work in here for a second and then we might have to call that first session quits. You can see how um, I just, instead of trying to scrape something and start fresh, I'll leave maybe the mistakes or I'll leave things that were there to some extent. And sometimes it's just a few strokes to uh, suggest it a little more uh, to what you want it to be. This would be, should be a lot uh, shorter. It shouldn't come up that high, so I'm gonna just take it off. But that was a dirty brush with dirty color. I just forced some variety in there that I didn't really want. Try not to, um, there's often little things that happen that you're like, ooh, that's cool, that's pretty, that little stroke. I try not to let that affect me because then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess that stroke up. And I think that uh, that tendency stops us from, from pushing further and further in our work. And yeah, it's true, sometimes it happens where it was better before you did something to it, but 
I'm interested in pushing myself beyond beyond that to, you know, at least learning from it. Oops, I did it too far that time. Maybe I'll, I'll be careful next time. My camera's about to die. I just want to hint at some of these dead trees. There's a bunch of